Jesus said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of God. Let us join together in the opening hymn.
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel according to Luke chapter 2 verses 22 following Kudamanesh Masiki Injil Suno Injil Mukaddas Mukaddas Luka Rasul Ki Injil Uska Dusra Ba Aur Uski Baisri Ayat Se Yushu Ki Hai And when the time came for their purification According to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. And as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord. A pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon and this man was righteous and devout looking for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord Jesus Christ and inspired by the Spirit he came into the temple and then the parents brought in the, in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thou, thy servant, depart in peace. According to thy word, for my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation of the Gentiles and for glory to thy people is right. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed him, blessed them, and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is spoken against. And a sword will pierce through your own soul also. That thought out of many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Emmanuel of the tribe Asher. She was a great, of great age, having lived with her husband seven years from her virginity and as a widow till she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshipping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she gave thanks to God and spoke to him to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the gospel of Christ. Ye Masiki Ijihe.
Good evening, everyone. Uh, greetings to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And it's 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 a pleasure. It's it's just uh, really wonderful every time I uh, get this opportunity or a chance to speak from the Word of God. And I really want to. And every time I get this opportunity, I really want to thank Him, thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for using me for His work, and uh, definitely uh, also thank Him for the technology that He has given us, uh, which brings us together in this virtual. A worship service to sing for His name and to worship His name. Uh, I wish to start this meditation with a word of prayer. Uh, let's bow our heads in prayer. O oh Lord Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, blessing me with this opportunity to speak from the Word of God. Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, I pray uh, to please guide me to speak from the Word of God confidently and also deliver the message that you want uh, me to deliver to ensure that the receivers of this message be drenched in your knowledge and be aware of your grace every day of your lives every day of their lives amen, amen. it's the first sunday after christmas and with god's grace so i'm hoping that everybody had a blessed christmas uh, today's theme is family life now, with Christmas celebrations just concluded, I think the word family is something which resonates with all of us. There is something about Christmas which brings the families together and may, or makes you want to be with your family, wherever, whichever part of the country, whichever part of the world you are in. A lot many times we are, you know, a lot many fortunate people are with their families throughout the year. But there are a lot many other times when we are in different parts of the world wherein we are drawn together on special occasions or uh, during festival celebrations, like for Christmas or Easter. But there is something about uh, families wherein we are just drawn together in these special occasions. And I think it's because of the warmth and the love that prevails over anything else which draws the families together on these special occasions. And perhaps uh, when we talk about Christmas, it must be on just the peak uh, of the warmth, primarily because uh, on that Christmas day, one of the most beautiful families came together on a cold winter night in a manger where the king was born. And I am sure, and I strongly believe, in even that cold winter night, I believe that the manger would have been the warmest place uh, because of the love and affection the family had for each other. I believe this warmth is something we yearn for in any family, which brings the family together, whether it's for Christmas, any celebration, or even on a plain ordinary day. Today, we are going to talk about that warmth which makes our family life blessed and enjoyable. I've always, you know, I've always been intrigued by this warmth factor in families one one if you, if you don't have it if you don't have that warmth in our families how do we ensure we get it right or to make sure that our families are together all the time or if we do have it how do we operate in it all the time okay and lastly you know how to keep that warmth alive at all times even when the situations grow really cold. Now, uh, do not, when, when you talk about families, don't just consider your immediate family, right? There are, uh, there are different definitions of families now. You know, one would be our, obviously our immediate family that we, uh, that we have. We have a work family. We have uh, friends who are considered as a family. Uh, part of the family we have our church family and, and i think something which makes sure that you know we stick to uh, the workplace that we work in or uh, stick to the friends that cling on to the friends that we have and make sure that we are so connected to our church is because of the warmth that uh, that we have in those specific family definitions so, and I think uh, as I was searching for the right recipe 
I may call it, to bring the warmth to different uh, families that we just uh, that I just called out. With God's grace and his and and you know God's meticulous thought process that he had in advance for our needs. To be honest, I didn't really had to run around too much. Uh, our Lord had written uh, this recipe so clearly in his words for us to pick up and use and enjoy and bask in this beautiful outcome. Let me draw your attention to Colossians chapter 3 verses 12 to 22. I will read through the first three verses. Uh, verse 12, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you, if any of you has grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. I have more uh, clear instruction than uh, what has been written in these uh, our verses for any definition of our families, whether it's our immediate family, our work family, our friends who have become our families, and even our church families, uh, to make sure that uh, the warmth is alive, continued, and blessed always. Now, as I was saying, I when I you know read these that this verse, it was very easy to find, and with God's grace, I found it very, as I was saying, very easily. I think the tough part was following it to the first. And following these verses and applying these verses in our life to the fullest is the most important part. And if you want to get the right results and you cannot pick and choose the part that you like. And I think uh, while I was reading this, uh, uh, reading these verses and uh, as clearly as the instructions were, uh, I wanted to share something of my experience, uh, which I had amidst the lockdown period that we had. Like we all know that during the lockdown period, we uh, we all were probably working from home, and everybody in the family was at home. And uh, you know, I like anybody else wanted to contribute a little bit more to the household chores that I didn't normally do. And I thought that, you know, to help out everybody, I'll cook one meal in a day. With zero experience in cooking, uh, that was definitely a task. And uh, uh, the, the, uh, the start point was obviously uh, going through some online videos, uh, following those instructions. And when we, when we start off an online video for cooking, it, it just gives you, and when we follow a recipe, it gives you instructions to follow. Okay, it'll have specific instructions of ingredients, specific instructions, when do you need to put in those ingredients to make sure that you get the right outcome. As a start, being a, a starting off with cooking with zero experience, I made sure that I follow the recipe to the tea. I made sure that, you know, I don't uh, try to mess around with the instructions. Whatever instructions were there, made sure that I uh, follow those instructions. Whatever in ingredients were called out, I made sure that I get those ingredients and put in the ingredients at the right time to bring in the right results and get that wow factor. And I was so amazed to see that when I did that, when I actually executed it on ground i not just got the right result but uh, you know at home when people were having that food were amazed at uh, how the result was so perfect so i think here is so here is a recipe that our lord has given us uh, to make sure that you know we keep the warmth alive in our families, which brings it brings our families together. That is, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. So as we follow uh, this uh, beautiful recipe that the Lord has given us to keep the warmth alive in our families, uh, we definitely need to put in a pinch of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience 
in the way we speak, in the way we behave, in our body language, and you will be amazed at the outcome uh, that we would have uh, to make sure that the warmth is kept alive for a long, long time. But remember, when we start off with this recipe that the Lord has given us, let me be honest with you, the road ahead would not be easy. But our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has not just prepared us for the easy part of the journey, but also for tough terrains. And even when you know that the road ahead is tough, uh, you continue and press on uh, to complete this a difficult recipe. He will just make us stronger as we go along the way to the end of the road. But like I said, that's not the end of the recipe. We would need to make sure that there are, there are further instructions which are there, which we need to follow to the fullest. Which brings me to verse 13, which goes like this. Bear with each other. Forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. We cannot embrace kindness, humility, gentleness, or patience if we have a grudge in our heart against anyone. The reason is the grudge in our hearts tend to overpower other actions we wish to execute in our lives. Because where our uh, mind goes, generally our body follows. If your mind follows kindness and humility, our body's actions will be in accordance to uh, our kindness and humility that we have in our hearts and minds. But if we keep a grudge in our hearts or if we have a grievance against somebody, uh, our body tends to drop uh, the act of kindness and humility no matter how much if we intend uh, it to happen. Our body does not support that action because your mind and heart is, is holding a grudge against somebody. Our mind and heart is having grievance uh, against somebody. A very active example uh, these days is, you know, uh, we all are working from home amidst this lockdown. A lot of offices want to continue from work, working from home. And I, as a person, try to be very humble and uh, operate in that kindness at home as well. But sometimes when we have a bad day at work and for some reason there is some person at work whom you are unwilling to forgive, with the actions a person has done, it becomes a lot harder uh, to be that kind-hearted or humble person at home, which you generally do it with so much ease. Uh, and one of the main reasons, one of the main reasons why that happens is because I still hold that grudge against that person from work, which makes it a lot harder for me to to operate in the kindness or humility which I generally uh, would do it with so much of ease. So from the instruction to the T would ensure bear with each other, uh, forgive one another. If any of you have the grievance, have grievance put against someone, forgive. Learn to forgive. Start to forgive as to when, because you know for a fact that the Lord has forgiven you for much, many, many, many other things that probably you have done wrong against him. And I am sure okay, the amount of time God has forgiven you will definitely outnumber the time that you have you've forgiven probably somebody else. And the final ingredient is to put on the virtue of love, which binds everything together. Without love, everything else just becomes tick in the box. But that's not what God has taught us. God has, God has given us his only son uh, to the world because he loved this world. Jesus gave us hope and gave us a way of life because he cared for us, because he loved us. 
and even in his excruciating pain he was going through on the cross for our sins he still chose to forgive us because he loved us so when you clothe yourself with compassion kindness humility gentleness and patience ensure that you're not holding a grudge against anyone but operate in our uh, lord's grace to forgive uh, just as our lord has forgiven you and above all do everything uh, with the foundation of love which binds together in which bond binds together everything in perfect harmony if you read the chapter ahead you would see that you would see such clear guidances with uh, and specific uh, instructions to specific people as well like to a husband to a wife to a children to parents and also to people who operate in different jobs and if if i read it through uh, verse 8 says wives submit yourselves to your husbands as it's fitting to the lord husbands love your wife and do not be harsh to them children obey your parents in everything for this pleases the lord fathers do not embitter your children for they will be discouraged slaves uh, or people who are who have a job who have jobs obey their earthly masters in everything and and do it not only when their eyes is on you and to carry their favor but sincere but with sincerity of heart and reverence of the lord whatever you do work at it with all your heart as working for the lord not for human masters the first time i read through it's uh the the overall instruction and uh, it seemed like a lot of work felt like uh, i need to follow a checklist but in god's way of working if i if i give again a reference to my culinary skills he wants us to prepare a feast okay he wants to us to prepare a feast with the right ingredients follow the recipe to the t to ensure you get the right results and it's not going to be easy as i was calling earlier also when we are following this big recipe that the lord has given us it's not going to be easy all the time but in the preparation of this feast what he wants us to do is put in our 100% in every part of the recipe bringing in the right ingredient bringing in the right ingredient in the right amount at the right time when you when we all put in our effort to complete our part our god will come through and complete the effort for us to complete the feast for us to enjoy which will bring together our loved ones in our families with our friends in our church in our workplace every day of our lives in perfect harmony as i was saying the road ahead may not be easy but keeping up half way when it becomes tough will definitely not the right thing to do and you know as i was saying when we are preparing the stuff recipe for this wonderful wonderful feast it's not going to be an easy uh, it's not going to be an easy task and taking the reference from the gospel reading today even joseph and mary uh, even for joseph and mary it was not easy easy task for them right from the time when joseph heard that the mary was expecting with a child rather than uh, filling himself with rage and being dispassionate about uh, what he heard uh, being a just man filled with god's uh, strength he approached the circumstance that presented itself uh, to him or in front which came in front of him with compassion actually kindness humility gentleness and patience and made sure uh, and uh approach the circumstance with all that in his heart and i'm sure that made their relationship more stronger than ever both joseph and mary if you continue to read luke chapter 2 and and, and the today's verse uh, chapter which was read both joseph and mary had to follow multiple instructions and guidance as jesus was born uh, to evade different 
difficult circumstances and sometimes which were hard to do but god was with them and they put in their every effort to complete the instruction they uh, uh instructions they were given and they had deliverance every time from the difficulty ahead of them and as they continue to do so uh, with persistence even in today's reading uh, you would see that they had taken jesus when he was 8 days old to the temple for purification ceremony and baby's dedication and which was required for them to do as part of the law while they were in the temple they met a man named uh, simon he took the baby uh, in his hand praised god if you read through verse 28 to 33 uh, uh, and he praised god uh, and thanked god for uh, for baby jesus in his hand joseph and may and he said so many things uh, through verses 28 to 33 and joseph and mary were amazed at what he said about Jesus and how he would be the salvation of many and a source of deliverance for many 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 more but he also informed Mary in verse 35 uh, a sword of deep sorrow will pierce through her soul as she continues this journey she knew that she may have to go through uh, difficult times you know as uh, he she would be raising jesus but she made sure that she continues on this uh, god's instruction uh, for a greater purpose the greater purpose where jesus brings together the people his people in one unity as one family through the light of revelation and salvation dear church as we are uh, getting ready to take uh take down a christmas decoration which we may have uh, put up last week to brighten up our homes let's ensure we know the greater purpose the greater purpose of decorating our hearts and minds with compassion kindness humility gentleness and patience never to take them off ever in our lives uh brightening up our hearts and minds with the knowledge that the strength and grace of our lord savior jesus christ is there with us every day to uh, complete the actions of the instructions that uh, he would show us in our hearts to bring our earthly families together and keep the warmth alive and continuing every day of our lives amen amen हमारे तू जो आसमान में है तेरा नाम पाक माना जाए तेरी बादशाह
Christ the Lord shine in your hearts and minds that you may see his glory and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forever. Amen. Oh uh -huh.